Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today's Down and Dirty is a quick overview of a an engineered field. This is called a mound system. This is a, a relatively common system in Michigan when you have a piece of property that doesn't perk. And what do I mean by that? If you're not familiar with, with the term perk, uh, it's short for percolate. So when you think about what a septic tank does, how a septic system works, uh, the water comes out of the house with all of the solids, your poop goes into your septic tank. Inside your septic tank, there is a baffle and there's two chambers generally. And what happens in the first chamber is you have bacteria that breaks down the solids and it keeps the solids in that first chamber. The second chamber, the water, the liquids are able to flow through and then you have your outlet pipe on the other end. It generally has a little filter on it uh, that you know needs to get clean probably about every five to eight years. And then the water goes out into your drain field. And in the drain field, literally all that happens is the water runs through all of your pipes and it runs down into the ground. It percolates down into the ground. Well, what happens when you have clay and you don't get any percolation? That's when you have to put in a mound system. And these are ridiculously expensive. You're probably looking about $30,000 uh, for a system like this. But we're gonna kind of talk about some of the main components here. So we don't have our tanks here yet, but on this system, there will be two tanks. Uh, what you're seeing right here is our exit, our pipe that's going to actually come into the field we have stubbed out. Uh, just on the back side where there's this big pile right here, that pile will get moved and we will dig in our two tanks. Your first tank is your initial tank. It's just like a regular septic tank. It's where the solids are gonna break down. But then your liquids go into a second tank and then it is called your pump chamber. And basically it is, it is a wet well. It is strictly there to hold water so that it can then be pressurized and pumped uphill. That's the other thing about this system is we are coming uphill. It goes kind of along behind me through here. And then we have stubbed up this pipe here in the center of our mound. And we'll walk over here and look at that. So you can see that pipe coming up. That pipe actually goes down about five feet from this point right here. And that is where the water comes up into this field and then it tees off and splits into two runs. One going this way, one going that way. And so these little discs underneath each one of these discs, uh, it, it has been drilled out so that water will spray and the disc keeps the stone off of that hole so that the water actually is able to disperse within this field. So let's talk about the field because this field itself is what's so expensive. What we're standing on right now, this center strip of sand is a specific type of sand uh, in Michigan. It is called 2NS. I don't know what it's called in your neck of the woods. It's basically uh, really, um, how do I even say it? It's like a clean sand. It doesn't have a lot of fines in it uh, as far as clay. It doesn't have any clay in it, so it doesn't pack together whatsoever. In fact, if we look down here and I rub my hands through the sand, you can see it doesn't clump at all. I can squeeze the snot out of it and it's still powdery. Versus our class two, this is a different type of sand. Well, well now it's not gonna do it, but when this gets a little bit wet, you can see from the dew and everything, it's clumping together. This is the difference between class two and two and S. Notice that two and S, you don't have any clumps in it whatsoever. Uh, the other thing you're gonna notice with two and S is the size of the aggregate in it. The reason this is expensive sand uh, is because they have to they have to strip it straight out. It's not something you can make with screening. They strip it straight out of the ground as two and S, and it can't get contaminated because once you contaminate it, it's no longer two and S sand. But what two and S does is it percolates really well. Water runs right through it. So what we have is about five feet vertically of this two and S sand that runs right through the middle of this berm. Then what you have is class two sand, which you can see running along the side here and running along the side here. We have sandwiched it in, we have sandwiched our two and S in with class two sand. You need at least two feet on each side of your berm of two and S of the class two. 
Once you have your two feet of class two, then you can mix up a sandy loam mix. So we actually took topsoil from on site here, mixed it with some sand, roughly a one to one ratio, somewhere right in there. And then that is what our berm is actually made out of. From here, we will put down a foot of stone like you can see there in the process of doing right now. That's gonna go over top of our pipe. And as we all know, stone uh, percolates water like nobody's business, which is why you use 6A. Also, let's take note of the 6A here. Notice there are no fines in the 6A. This is clean stone. So you're not gonna have any sand or any sort of small granular aggregate in here. It is gonna be just stone, nice round stone. And they do that so that this system can breathe because when water percolates down, air has to be able to kind of come into the field and replace it. So you have to use something that breathes really well, which is why we use a foot of 6A. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna take that really sandy loam mix there. That is mixed probably, I don't know, two loads of sand to one load of topsoil. So it's very, very sandy for the breathability. Once we get our stone to grade, we're gonna lay down a layer of fabric and then we're gonna cap everything over with that sandy loam mix that we mixed up. And that is a pressurized mound system. That's kind of the overview of how that works. Uh, the only thing else to note is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, down there at the house when we dig in our two tanks, uh, you do have some electronics and a control panel because it is a pump system. You've got uh, multiple float valves in there and warnings and you've got an alarm system in case you have an overflow issue. So there are some electronics associated with this system. But relatively speaking, I was just talking to the engineer yesterday. This is once you kind of get it all set up, it is expensive to put in. There's very, very little maintenance with this system. It doesn't require any sort of annual maintenance. Uh, it is, you know, it's kind of like a traditional septic system. Once you get it in, outside of having to make sure you don't have any pump issues, you don't really have to do anything with this system versus some of the other engineered septic systems. There is an annual maintenance that has to be performed by a licensed technician. It's not like you can just go out there and do it yourself. So this is of the, of the really expensive systems to have, this is one of the better ones, but it's still expensive as crap. Like I said, this is about a $30,000 system for this septic install. So, so anyway, that's all I've got for today. Just kind of wanted to give you guys an overview of the system. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them down below and we'll catch you guys on the next one.